Brian Heidelberger, a partner with the law firm of Winston & Strawn in Chicago, and I'm here today with your advertising age, mini law lesson, the law of apps. But first, a little disclaimer and some viewer mail. Adam Ryder from United Camera writes in, Brian, what's with all the legal disclaimers? Are you truly an attorney? And Adam, I can assure you, I am. And while I didn't get a traditional legal degree like many others, I did watch a lot of Law and & Order, and you may be familiar with my prior legal firm. So I do believe you're all going to be covered here. Let's get on to it. The app regulatory environment is hot, with yesterday the California Attorney General having sued Delta Airlines. Now, 30 days ago, she had warned over 100 different app developers and manufacturers uh, using apps that they uh, needed to have privacy policies prominently disclosed in conjunction with their apps. And it seems that they are now alleging that Delta has failed to uh, uh, disclose that uh, privacy policy clearly and conspicuously, and because of that they have brought their first lawsuit. Now the FTC is also on the warpath regarding apps, and they really treat them just like regular advertising. And that's why in the past year, year and a half, they've brought a number of cases against app developers and uh, those using apps to sell their products and services. They brought a uh, case for false advertising against an acne cure company. They brought a case uh, regarding children's privacy against a mobile app developer. And then they brought another app development uh, case regarding uh, privacy settings. So you can see they're coming after the whole panoply of advertising services and treating them just like a website or other advertising. Now, the New York Attorney General has also been interested in apps. In a case recently in the past couple months, they brought a case against the uh, maker of Teach Me apps who allegedly was collecting personal information about children and arguably selling it without telling the users or even getting prior consent from the kids' parents. That's obviously a hot button issue these days. So what do we do? Well, the FTC has published a guide to help mobile app developers, and you see kind of their bullet point list here. Some seem self-evident, but something to keep in mind is that uh, while things seem self-evident, many people are getting in trouble for these v various things. Tell the truth about what your app can do. That seems um, obvious, but you want to make sure that you're telling the truth and you're not burying the details somewhere else. You see a couple uh, bullet points down there. Uh, offer choices that are easy to find and easy to use. Basically, judges and the regulators say that Dis regardless of disclaimers, things need to be prominently disclosed, clearly and conspicuously disclosed. And if they're not, they're going to be considered that they're not even there. Now, what do you else do you see on this list? You see a lot of things about privacy, building in privacy considerations from the start, pr protecting kids' privacy, uh, get consent before you're collecting sensitive information, and keeping data secure. Obviously, within apps, privacy is the one uh, very important thing, and you don't want to rely on anybody's word that they've got you covered. You want to go through and see exactly how do you have us covered. How are you uh, collecting kids' information? How are you keeping it secure? How are you getting consent? Make sure you've buttoned down all those things, because regardless if somebody told you that you were covered, um, if you're not, you are going to be the one who's liable. The FTC has also made some recommendations regarding children's apps. Now, they say that there is certain key information that really needs to be disclosed in simple and short disclosures or icons that are really easy to find. Now, what is this key information? That's what the app collects, how the information will be used, with whom the information will be shared, uh, and if the app connects with any social media or allows any kind of behavioral advertising. All of that key information needs to be short, simple, and disclosed in an easily understood format. Now that may not be easy for you to do, but at the end of the day, the FTC doesn't care. You've got to find a way to do it. What else? Well, we know about the privacy policy. You need a privacy policy and you need a link on the app promotions page in the developers disclosures or another easily accessible form and that's from the FTC and we believe that the state attorney generals feel the same way. Now there have been a number of class actions ray apps Consumers have sued major app developers for illegally uh, uploading the uh, address book 
without user's permission. Again, we've talked about you need to get permission prior to using any personal information via an app in any way. And another interesting one, cab drivers in San Francisco recently sued the Uber app, which is kind of a, a, a rideshare company, uh, and they're alleging that they're violating uh, business practices laws and skirting laws regarding registration as a taxi. Now another interesting lawsuit regarding apps is a GPS uh, app, which was kind of a cyclist app where you'd ride on your bike and then you'd, uh, you'd your time would be in the app and the person whose time was the best was declared the king of the mountain. Uh, a rider in that app actually died and the family of that biker uh, was uh, is now suing the app developer. Now the case is not done and I'm sure the app had some good disclaimers but of course a good disclaimer is not going to get you around necessarily a lawsuit. You definitely want to make sure you have some insurance. Now let's get to that in talking about app development and what are the considerations you need to have when you are developing that app or you're creating dev app development agreements. You want to make sure that you have language that talks about who owns the code. What about the pre-existing code? And what about third-party code that's in there? You see the kind of considerations here. You know, the client should hopefully own all the code and content that relates to them. The developer often retains the right to certain pre-existing code and third-party applications and code should only be used if the client is aware of it and agrees to whatever limitations there are. What other things? Well, if you're hiring an app developer, make sure they're going to indemnify you for third-party rights infringements. And if they're not, make sure you're aware of that before you engage them, before you contract with them, because it's going to be awfully hard to get them to agree to it after they've started the project or after you've paid for them. We know all about data security and making sure that they've got that under consideration. In terms of payment, make sure you don't pay it all up front and make sure you get your contract nailed down before you pay them any money. What you want to do is pay them on milestones um, so if anything is not completed or not completed to your satisfaction, you have some leverage there. And certainly you want to make sure that the developer of your apps has some intellectual property coverage for insurance and adds you as an additional insured that will help you uh, be covered there. Now, in your app development agreements, you want to cover things like privacy and data security and behavioral advertising. You want to make sure that they're going to be compliant with third-party platforms where you'll be selling your apps like BlackBerry World or the iTunes Store. So you want to cover those issues as well. Um, and finally, you want to look into a couple other issues like intellectual property clearance, you know, um, the name of the app. You've got to clear that just like any other product. You want to make sure that any product claims are vetted just like any other product claims you'd put in advertising. If you're conducting sweepstakes or contests or other promotions, make sure you have rules. Make sure they're illegal. Um, if you're talking about sales, you know, you've got to consider all the e-commerce issues that anyone would on any other website. And of course, there's children's issues, not just the privacy considerations we've talked to, but all the KRU type issues, and that's Children's Advertising Review Unit, those issues that children uh, advocates are concerned of. So that's it for today. I know you were probably about to blow your head off, but if you were, stop because we're done. I hope you enjoyed this, and just remember, let's be careful out there, and we'll see you soon.